Hello all on Thursday, August 26th, we did our live training on the maintenance phase of dieting. Um, and so I am going ahead and recording this after the fact, um, just because there were some technical issues on the call. So allow me to begin here. Um, so this is the fourth video in our phases of dieting series. Uh, hold on, let me put myself in the top corner here. Um, I, uh, I began this series quite some time ago um, because this really periodized nutrition really makes up the, the basis of a lot of what uh, our lives look like in this coaching program. Um, and this phase is all about maintaining the fat loss that you have uh, accomplished and then maintaining muscle and lean mass um, so that you can be healthy uh, for the next decade. Um, remember those four phases, we've got reverse diet, diet, maintenance, and the disease reversal phase, which actually can include the other phases. Um, but that's just a specific phase for, for folks that have, you know, heart disease or, or type two diabetes generally. Um, so this is what these phases look like practically. The reverse diet phase is characterized by increasing calories. That's actually to just fuel your body enough, um, so that you can, um, have more energy, uh, improve your digestion, improve your sleep, your recovery from exercise. It's a great time to build muscle. And then the diet phase is, of course, what everybody thinks of when they think of eating healthy, which is just, you know, eating less um, and the intentional pursuit of fat loss there. And then recovery or maintenance. You know, we kind of call that the same thing. That's what maintenance often is. Um, most people don't maintain the weight they lose. That is sort of the, what makes up the, the basis of, of why we use this phase. And I'm just going to say that the data shows that it's somewhere between 90 to 95% of people can't maintain the weight they lose. Um, and then a, the vast majority of those people actually gain back more weight than what they lose. And it's so hard for us to wrap our head around it. But I just want to encourage you, wherever you're watching this, believe it. Don't assume you're different and don't assume it's easy to maintain the weight that you have lost. Um, it's a tough challenge. Your body is designed and wired to put back that weight um, oftentimes. So we need a strategy. Let me start this presentation with an apology. You know, as a coach, I'm very often putting people in a diet phase or having people um, – uh, making sure they're getting enough protein and, and actually increasing calories a lot. But I have actually probably not put people at maintenance as often as I should. And the reason for that is because there's a lot of pressure for us to do something, for us to go somewhere, you know, let's get into weight loss or let's get into muscle building um, and, and bone building, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like we want to be going somewhere. It doesn't seem like it's ever a good decision. You know, like, why are you paying me to hold you where you are? Right. Um, and I hope to give a foundation for why maintenance is worth going through with a coach. Um, and I'll kind of explain it at the end of this, um, uh, how we can actually accomplish that. But, but I know that, that some of my clients would have probably gotten better results if we were more uh, patient. And if I had the, the courage to put them at maintenance for maybe a little bit longer. Um, so, uh, why is maintenance important? Someone has said, I've quoted this often, we don't have a weight loss problem, we have a weight regain problem. Um, tons of diets you can lose weight, but, you know, uh, very, very infrequently can people maintain it off. So people want to feel like they're competent stewards of their body, and they want to be at peace with their weight. People who are overweight want to be able to get down to a normal weight, but then they want to be able to stay there. And then some people are able to lose weight whenever they want. They can snap their fingers, go on a diet. Um, but they struggle to stay at the bottom of that diet. Most people find themselves lost and overwhelmed with their inability to lose weight um, or, you know, they, they lose it and gain it back. This is, this is an adjust. This is a big problem. It's a problem because your body's well designed to keep you healthy and it's actually pretty good at maintaining your weight well. Um, and so there's no reason for us to struggle this mightily with, with this problem. Um, I personally know how hard it is to maintain weight loss. Um, and, or I, I should even say, actually, I know how hard it is to maintain a healthy weight because my story is a little bit different than a lot of our clients. But I've had three large yo-yo diet cycles in my life. All three of them involved trips to places where I wasn't able to uh, eat a lot of food and actually got significantly underweight. Um and um, 
I, I could give some sp- I, I, on the on the live call. I gave some specifics about those, but I'll, I'll give one story. I was uh, with the National Guard on a training assignment, and it was during COVID lockdown. So I was on uh, rations for about seven months, five to seven months, um, and I lost a substantial amount of weight. I felt really, really poor, um, and I, I couldn't maintain my weight where I wanted it to. I couldn't maintain the lean mass that I had, and actually when I got back to normal food, when I got back to normal life, uh, I came back a little bit. I, I As I gained that weight back, I gained it back with a little bit more of a belly than I had had before. Um, I wasn't able to maintain my leanness. Um, So anyway, so I've actually gone through this personally, even though that's a a, a much different um, experience than a lot of my clients have. Clients uh, who have amazing stories of maintaining are just, are, are some of my favorites because you know, it's, it's, it's one thing to get a great result in the short term, but it's, it's so wonderful to see a client a year, two years down the line, who's been able to maintain their results. Um, so actually one of my favorite clients, I won't, I won't name her by name, but she knows who she is. One of my favorite clients to work with, um, had a great experience. She lost something like 20, 22 pounds, um, which doesn't seem like a ton, but really 22 pounds of fat. She was very, very um, active in the gym. She um, she actually might have lost a little bit more fat than that and actually gained a little bit of muscle. Um, and she ended up taking, she reversed her prediabetes. We ended up reestablishing carbohydrates. So she was able to eat all the foods that she loved in her life. And she ended up maintaining for six months. And we actually set on the schedule a couple of diets for her. Like two times we said, hey, let's go ahead and diet and get some more weight off because she still had a little bit further that she wanted to go. And for different reasons, her life was busy. She just, she she was kind of having fun with, uh, with some friends and she ended up not really successfully going into those diets. However, for six months, she maintained the weight loss that she has and we've actually recently started dieting again. Now that sounds like... Um, not a great result. And honestly, we probably could have gotten a better result, but it is so great to know that she is able to maintain that weight loss. And we got her calories up to a very high point. She was eating tons of really good food and she literally made a new baseline for her body. It is so unlikely that any of those 22 pounds that she had lost, she's ever going to touch those again. Um, so that's just a, an amazing story, even though everybody wants to see you know 40 pounds of weight loss in a six month period. Think of yourself in six months or think of yourself six months after you've lost a substantial amount of weight. Wouldn't it feel good to know that you knew how to keep that weight off? So here's how we're going to help you be a client like that. You're going to be able to go to six months after your diet and maintain your weight loss. We're going to do uh, you know a three-step plan. First, I want you to understand maintenance. Two, I want you to figure out where yours is. And three, we're going to practice it together. So first, let's understand maintenance. Um, I use the term maintenance like two different ways. Um, and this is very common. So the first will be like your true maintenance. Where is your body actually maintaining your weight? Um, and the second, the second is like your theoretical maintenance. So your true maintenance is uh, just any, most people when they come to me for coaching, they aren't actively gaining or losing weight. Or if they are, they're maybe gaining a pound every month or something. But essentially, most people live at maintenance the majority of the time. So the way we find that is I have you track your baseline food and figure out where it is. And maintenance isn't just like one line. It's not like you, your, your metabolism is running at 1,800 calories. And if you eat 1,801 calorie, you'll gain weight. If you eat 1,799, you'll lose weight. Actually, there's a range in which people maintain. Um, and then if you go... So like a very common range that I'll see from people is about 1,500 calories to right at over 2,000. Their weight over time might fluctuate day to day, but over time it's pretty much staying the same. Um, So one way to find your your maintenance right now, like your your actual maintenance, is to just track your food and see where you are and track your weight. If your weight's staying the same, where you're eating is your, your true maintenance. However, the theoretical maintenance is actually what we're usually referring to when I say maintenance. So, and theoretical maintenance is the approximate minimum calories your body needs to maintain muscle, brain power, exercise, recovery from exercise, the walking that you do, adequate sleep, relationships, stress, work. You add up all the energy that you need to do all the things that you're doing in your life. 
And uh, there's a lot of energy that you need to thrive. If you're like most people, 90 to 95% percent of my clients actually even if they're overweight even if they've got a lot of weight to lose really are not eating enough you need energy to keep up with the demands and responsibilities in your life most people don't get it um, so most people are actually they come to me and they're maintaining at 15 16 maybe 1700 calories um, when really their, their body actually might need a lot more than that so here's how uh so you know step two i said um we're going to understand maintenance too. We're going to figure out where yours is. So let's figure out where your maintenance is. Um, the Harris Benedict equation is one way that I like to just kind of estimate where your where your uh, maintenance, where your theoretical maintenance is. Um, I found the Harris Benedict usually is a slight overestimate, but it's going to seem like it's a massive overestimate. It's not massive, but it maybe is is slight. For for most clients, I want you to run this number for you at home for yourself at home and just calculate yourself as, as a light exercise one to two times a week. Um, there's an activity factor in here. So this is based off of, you know, they basically took a couple thousand people from like each demographic, you know, men age 40, women age 40 who are five, five, who are, you know, 180 pounds. And what they do is they took them into a lab and just measured how much energy their body was burning. And then you do this, this is an activity factor. You, you multiply by how many times you're active throughout the week. I did for myself moderate two to three times a week because I work out pretty hard three to four times a week. And I, again, I, I, uh, I think it slightly overestimates that activity factor. Um, so my weight, my height, I think I'm actually 5'11", but whatever. Um, and I, my theoretical maintenance is about 2,900. If you look at my, this is my tracker from yesterday. This is the the um, chronometer that I use to track my food. And I'm at 2,851 2, calories this is a pretty normal day for me. And I, I am indeed maintaining my weight. So my theoretical and true maintenance are actually the, the same right now. So figure out where yours is. I want you to run your Harris Benedict equation. If you need to know how to do that, I literally you can just Google Harris Benedict equation and you'll get the Omni calculators, one of the first hits, and you're able to kind of run this. So here's here's an example of someone who's on the live call. About 201 pounds, 5'11, 72, male, you know, light exercise one or two times a week is what I do for almost all my clients. There is a approximate maintenance for that for that person. Okay, now what you can do is so run your Harris Benedict for your theoretical maintenance. And then I want you to look at your spreadsheet to figure out where you're truly maintaining or where you're truly eating. Um, if you're dieting, if you're reverse dieting, or if you're at maintenance um, or recall, you should still be able to figure out kind of where your maintenance is. You know, you look at your spreadsheet and, you know, there's a couple weeks in a row where you're eating 1800 calories and you're you're, uh, you maintain there, but then when you go to 1600, you lose a little bit of weight. You can, you can kind of find where your, where your maintenance is there. Um, maintenance or recall, like I'll put on a spreadsheet to the left of a lot of my clients when they're actually at maintenance. Um, if you see that, you know, I usually give you a target for what I'm estimating your maintenance to be. Okay. So when should we go into a maintenance phase? In the other videos you may have you should be familiar with when you should go into a reverse diet, when you should go into a diet, but when should we practice maintenance? If you consistently are not eating enough, you should bring your body to a normal level of maintenance to fuel your body enough so that you can have enough energy to, to do the things that you need to in your life. Um, also, so if you look at this Harris Benedict equation and you say, wow, it's saying I need 2000 calories a day. I'm only eating 1200. I would, it feels like a, a ton of food to eat 2000 calories. That's a good sign. You actually need to train your body to, to fuel yourself a little bit better. If this Harris Benedict number seems massive, uh, you're probably under eating. If it seems a little high, then maybe you're, you're kind of close to where you are. But for a lot of people, I run the Harris Benedict and they say, Andrew, I've never eaten that much food in my life. Again, that's okay. This is usually a slight overestimate, but if you're a thousand calories away from that, uh, we need to, we need to bring you up to a maintenance level. 
You should also go and practice maintenance after you diet uh, and lose weight. And then I would also add into here, you can practice maintenance if you're um, maybe you're having a vacation coming up or you've got in-laws coming in town and you don't want to uh, you don't want to be on a diet when they come in or if you just need a, a mental break sometimes. So, again, you 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 reverse diet, you diet this recovery would then, you know, if you were to extend this graph you kind of go back up and, and do almost like another reverse diet to get to get to a maintenance level. So this is what I was saying earlier. What if I'm eating way less than my theoretical maintenance? What if I look at the Harris-Benedict equation and I say, that is way more food than I ever eat. You are likely under fueling. You're also likely not sleeping well. You might be drowsy throughout the day. One thing that people don't think about is you're probably not getting the biggest bang for your buck out of your exercise. Because if you're under fueled, you like you don't even that's something you, you wouldn't even be able to tell. But when I give people more food, they get into the gym and they're like, oh, my gosh, I, I feel a lot better. Um, and then you're getting less sore after your workout. Sometimes people say, well, I worked that hard, but I've been sore for five days. Well, you're sore because your body's having a hard time to recover because you might not be eating enough. Um, also, if you are one of those people that's just like, it doesn't matter what I do, I can't lose weight. I had a call with a potential client the other day. She said, I went to a summer camp as a as a um, as an employee there. I walked the whole time. I ate healthy foods the whole time. I couldn't lose weight at all. Well, she may have just developed a habit of not eating that much, and and so she just didn't really matter what she did. She wasn't able to 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 force her body basically into a deficit. Okay, what if you've just dieted? Um, well, okay. So say you're you've just finished a diet or you're about to finish a diet and say you've lost 20 pounds over the last 15 weeks on a diet, something like that, a pretty, pretty good result. And say you started at 200 pounds. So now you're 180 pounds. Well, your final diet weight is not your final weight. Um, so say you, you lose 20 pounds, you go from 200 pounds to 180 pounds. Um, you know, you're probably going to end up maintaining it about 184, you know, something like that. You, you know, a couple of pounds are going to come back on the scale um, because you're going to bring calories back closer to your estimated maintenance. You'll maybe store a little bit more fluid and then your weight is going to level off pretty quickly at a new level. So after you diet, you kind of increase the amount of food you're eating and then maybe your the scale ticks up just a little bit and then it just kind of kind of levels out and you have kind of a new a new baseline. So we understand maintenance now, you know, both the, th the theory and the practice. So theoretically, you've got an amount of food that you need, but in practice, your body's going to adapt to what you're eating. Um, you know how to find your maintenance. You can run the Harris-Benedict equation. You can also look at your spreadsheet and see where is my weight maintaining. Um, I had a, a, a live call where I gave my clients homework. I said, I want you to email me where you think your maintenance is. And about eight out of 10 people pretty much nailed where their maintenance is. So if you actually go and look at it, you'll be able to find your maintenance pretty well. Um, okay, so now it's time that we practice it. What will your life look like for the next 10 years? That's the question. Because most of the time, we spend our time maintaining. Even if you're someone who's gained four to five pounds over the course of a year for the last you know, decade, you know, most people that, that are significantly overweight, it didn't all happen at one event, even though that does happen. Usually it's just a very, very slow gain. So most of the time we're at or pretty close to our maintenance for a really, really long time. Um, so when you go off into your life after you end coaching, because we want our clients to become self-sufficient, um, what is it going to look, what is, what is your day-to-day -day look like? And by the way, we should practice that within a coaching relationship. So let's work with your coach to practice sustainable habits of maintenance. Here's a couple of things that I might suggest that, that could work. Say you're working with your coach and maybe you got two, maybe three months left uh, before you, you try to go it alone. What if on your check-in, um, this is something that I've done with clients to, and it's, it's worked really well. You pick your macro prescription send it to your coach and tell your coach why you think that is your prescription. So you can say, Hey, I think my maintenance is about 1800 calories. Um, I've got family coming in. I'd like to, I don't want to be eating too much food, but I don't want to be like dieting. So I'm going to go to 1800 calories. This is where my protein will be. And I want, you know, a decent amount of carbs and fat this week. 
hey, that sounds great. Another thing you could do is just set like a, a protein goal that, that you know, to get a, a lean protein, this kind of ties into the Nutrition for Life live training that's previous to this. You can find it on YouTube um, or in the, uh, the email last week. Um, but we can set uh, benchmarks so that you know you're getting enough protein because most people will live at a maintenance level, but they're not getting enough protein. So you could set a rule like I'm going to get 150 grams, which is about five five ounces of, of lean meat two times a day. You know, so for lunch and dinner, I'm going to have five and a half you know, ounces of lean meat. And if I hit that, I know I'll, I'll get about my protein and then I'm going to eat until I'm full, but not beyond that. Most people, if you do that, you're actually going to be able to maintain pretty well as long as you keep up with your exercise. Another thing you could do is say, hey, coach, I'm not going to track my food this week because I'm probably not going to track my food that often over my next 10 years. You know, if I decide I really got to get a couple of pounds off, I'll, I'll do that. But, you know, but I, I, I don't I'm not going to track my food for the rest of my life. So I want to practice not tracking my food and I'm going to get my lean proteins and then I'm going to get a big green salad uh, every day or I'll do a big green salad and a protein smoothie each day. And I'm going to see if I can maintain my weight. All those are just great strategies. And you might find that you feel amazing. You might find that you don't maintain your weight that well over the course of a couple of weeks. So proper maintenance is about more than the scale. It's about more than calories. Um, you know, just because the scale fluctuated doesn't mean you didn't do maintenance well. And sometimes the scale could say the same, and that doesn't mean you did maintenance well. So keep practicing the new behaviors that you're doing in coaching. So keep exercising. You have maintained your weight in, in this coaching program because you've done strength training three times a week. Remember, that's like a non-negotiable for us continue to strength train three times a week. If you do that, if you get sufficient protein and you eat enough to fuel your body and you're able to work out pretty hard, even if the scale stays the same, you should improve your body composition. In other words, you should be getting more muscular and, and lose a little bit of fat, even as the scale stays the same. Uh, and then I, I keep saying that, but, but most people do not maintain with sufficient protein. So most people, even if their maintenance is 1800 calories, they're eating 1800 calories, they're only eating 60, 70 grams of protein, and they're just eating a lot of carbs and fats. So here are a couple of questions that you should try to figure out in your maintenance phase that you're working with your coach as you practice for the next 10 years of your life. How much fat do you like to eat? How many carbs do you like to eat? What's your alcohol budget, both for events and celebrations and just for like a, a weeknight uh a weeknight evening. How much movement do you like to sustain? Can you decrease that movement for a month and then maybe get back into it? So say you're, you're someone who's like, I like to work out in the gym four times a week, but sometimes I need a little bit of a break. So can you, can you practice decreasing that? And, and actually, can you still maintain your weight by decreasing your movement a little bit? Maybe the, the fall comes and you love to go to the Smoky Mountains and hike in the fall. And so you're going to spend less time in the gym. That absolutely makes sense. Or maybe the summer is so hot, you enjoy walking in spring and fall and maybe even winter, but you just can't stand to walk during the summer. So can we take away from your walking time and maybe add an extra session to the gym? Here's another question. Can you take a tracking break and still estimate in your mind and make sure you're eating enough and, and, and maintain your weight and feel good and maintain your exercise? You should have answers to these questions by the time you finish coaching. If you don't know pretty darn well, um, if, if you haven't vetted these questions and you can't kind of rattle off the top of your head, um, then you, you've got a few things to figure out. And hey, some of these things can be figured out really, really quickly. Uh, I had a great question from a client that I have asked myself uh, so many times. So it wasn't the first time I had heard it, uh, but I, I got asked this recently um, while I was actually creating this presentation. And this goes back to the apology I had for the, from the beginning. Again, maintenance is holding the scale the same and practicing nutrition for life. And I, I had a client say, well, like if I'm just staying the same, what am I, what am I paying you for? Um, and it's a great question, and it's why I haven't put it, it, enough clients at, at maintenance, because I want to be going somewhere with, with you as a client. The problem is 
you have to do maintenance to maintain it. And so if you've just lost weight with me, we're going to go into a maintenance phase to make sure that you can maintain. But here's the other reason it's maybe more, more important. It is impossible, even for my best clients, and you have those, those clients that just they do everything you tell you all the time, even for them, it is impossible to actively and vigorously pursue like goals, goals like fat loss, muscle building, disease reversal every week. Literally, your body will not let you. You can be, you can want to lose a hundred pounds. You can do all the healthy behaviors you want, and you're not just going to linearly lose a pound a week for two years, get it off, and maintain. That's just not how your body works, and we know that. You know that if you've tried it, you know that it, you've gone on a diet, you were successful, and then your weight loss stalled, and then you gained it back. And then finally, your mind, spirit, and motivation are just going to give out. You cannot ride motivation for more than a couple of weeks at a time. We've got to budget in times of rest. So one of the most important things that maintenance teaches us is it's okay to maintain. And if, you're, if your nutrition stays the same and the scale stays the same, but you focus on your sleep, you focus on getting some more steps, you continue to do well in the gym, uh, you make time for friends and family, you shoot out a gratitude text, um, you have a <clears throat> wonderful quiet time in the morning. You're not going to be maintaining, actually. You're, you're going to be improving and your life is going to be getting better. So uh, rule of thumb, real quick, uh, you want to leave coaching, th this coaching program on maintenance. So you don't want to leave like in the middle of a diet or at the end of a diet. So look ahead and discuss an exit strategy with your coach. Uh, even if you're dieting and you plan on sticking with your coach after, still look ahead and, and talk about what maintenance looks like. Um, that would be like, that's just a great message I get from clients. Like, hey, I'm looking at my next month and I'm wanting some some feedback on where you think I should go. That's like, that's why we're here. So that's a, a discussion we love to have. Um, prepare for and practice. Um, uh, like, like prepare for and practice living like you're going to live once you're away from your coach with your coach. Uh, you got to practice how you play. And then after you leave, you should be consistently asking yourself, am I maintaining? Am I maintaining my weight? Am I maintaining my behaviors? Am I maintaining a positive outlook on health? And then, okay, once you check off the box, yes, I'm maintaining. Hey, are you able to continue? Do you have the skills to maybe build your calories a little bit, increase your metabolism, and then, and then diet again? Do you know what that looks like? Again, I want my clients to be practicing that stuff with me so that you're able to practice it on your own for the rest of your life. I think that is all I got. I think that's the very last slide. Uh, I appreciate you if you've watched all 28 minutes of this presentation. Uh, it's really important that we kind of get this right together because this is the missing piece in the fitness industry and in the health world. Um, you know, I, I want to be a, a humble coach and your, your humble guide because I know how hard it is once you leave this relationship. If you're like a lot of our clients, you um, you get great results and then you're able to maintain most of those results after, but maybe some old behaviors creep back in and and then maybe you're unable to continue. You know, we've had a lot of people lose 50 pounds. It's like, are you able to lose 50 more pounds? Like, maybe not quite yet. Um, so we want to practice that better now um, before you go. I want to be, you know, a, a good coach doesn't have his clients forever. A good coach teaches his clients how to, how to maintain their results um, for, for the continued pursuit. Um, so anyways, I, I love the opportunity to, to do that with my clients and I'd love some feedback. Shoot me a comment or an email with if this was helpful, if you've, if you've got some tips. And then I really do want you to um, find your maintenance by running the Harris Benedict and then look at your spreadsheet and estimate where your real maintenance is.